stuff to tell you about. Um, I suppose I should start by justifying these boots. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> oh, the rooting tooting boots. <laughs> there was a moment just before I had these boots where I was looking at the boots through a shop window and I thought, I want their boots. <laughs> right? And like, with, this is the nature of consumerism, how it succeeds. I sort of thought, if I get them boots, I will be truly happy. <laughs> <laughs> that is what's missing from my life, is them fucking boots. <laughs> right? And when I, like, I got the boots, I sort of put them on in the shop, and the woman goes, oh, do you want to put your other shoes back on now? And I looked at my other shoes with disgust. <laughs> Because, like, my mum weren't there to force me to put them shoes on. Save the boots for best! Save the boots for best! I'm wearing the boots! <laughs> right, so, I left the shop wearing these rooting tooting boots, right? And, uh, like, but, you know, if you've got something new, you're a bit sort of self-conscious of the new thing. Like, the boots were sort of wearing me. <laughs> And like, I sort of felt like the boots were grassing on me a little bit when, like, when I left the shop. We're not his real boots, you know. <laughs> he just bought at us. No, I've had these boots ages when you're trying to look relaxed. Yeah, look at me, I'm relaxing my boots. Yeah. <laughs> Woo! Uh, it's an unwritten rule that I do pledge at least an orgasm per person. So, I think we should lift the lights in the old Latin Empire and see what I've got myself into. <laughs> I may now move among you. Up here. Up here? <laughs> I hope you mean that geographically. <laughs> not anatomically. <laughs> Down here, where everyone is. Look at you all living your lives. <laughs> <laughs> all right, hello, everyone up there. <laughs> Don't feel you're missing out on anything, you ain't. Uh, like, what have you? I. What? What's that sign mean? I cat you. <laughs> The, uh, the arrow points to Cat the individual and Cat heart me. There ain't even an apostrophe yes. <laughs> I don't think I could have sex with someone with such a slender grasp on grammar. <laughs> <laughs> Come down this gully, right? Fuck it, you don't have to ask me twice. <laughs> you want me down your gully? Down your gully is where I shall bloody well end up. <laughs> there ain't very much leg room here, is there? Oh, it's, it's, mate, it's difficult. I'm finding it hard to manage. Hello. Sorry that I've stopped here. <laughs> You've been compromised by that, haven't you, in a way? <laughs> uh, I'll just come across here on my knees. What do you want? 
You're grasping my knees, you're holding me back. You're like an overbearing parent. <laughs> Stay in the house, dear. You don't need to go away to London. Stay here with me. Your asthma's too bad. <laughs> Look at that cable. It's nice, isn't it, the cable? Look at everyone having to handle the cable. <laughs> it's nice. Hello, are you the wife of that lovely man? I am, yeah. I love him. <laughs> will he give me a little cuddle, do you think? I'm sure he will. I'm going to cuddle him. <laughs> Hello. Oh, no. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Like the path that Buddha himself took, it were taxing, but it were worth it at the end. I may not feel enlightened, but by jingo, I feel stiff. <laughs> I wish I did. <laughs> Like, as if used to a midwife's delivering me back. Oh, that's working quite well. <laughs> Thanks. Pass the cable along, we're all one. Let's work as a team like ants. We like ants. <laughs> ah, good old ass working as a team. Right, I feel better now. like it, the Acne Empire, Chaplin has walked on that stage, Hancock, Stan Laurel, a lot of shit people as well. Yeah, you don't... <laughs> We've erased them from history with a kind of extra sketch we keep in our brains. <laughs> If the media is a tool of the government designed to keep us docile, stupid and spellbound, divorced from our true spiritual natures, or is it a bit of a laugh with a quick look at the Hackney Gazette? <laughs> building for sermons of hatred. It's a bit downbeat. <laughs> and potentially risky. <laughs> Police are monitoring a banned Islamic cleric who is believed to be preaching at a Dawson Community Centre tomorrow. Ooh! <laughs> <laughs> well, that could be nice. I'll pop along. <laughs> Usman Ali has been banned from his mosque in Woolwich. That must be embarrassing to get banned from the mosque. Oh, fuck off. <laughs> oh, yeah. Get out. What do we know? We'll find oh, out. Here, here. Yeah. He got banned from it after trustees won a court injunction in which he was suspended from Woolwich's Queen Elizabeth Hospital last week. He's banned from mosques, he's banned from hospitals. What kind of behaviour is he indulging in? <laughs> Troubling people with their sick beds, interrupting prayers. He's a maverick. Let's get behind him. <laughs> now cops will be monitoring the former member of the band al Rune group. Oh. You know, like, sometimes I start reading something, I think, just read this out, it'd be a laugh, and then gradually I begin to realise, you're going to get fucking killed because of this. <laughs> <laughs> like, say 
say someone tries to kill me, just who you lot like, just just don't let them. <laughs> so I was only mucking about when he was being flippant and disrespectful about your culture at a time of universal conflict. <laughs> Council does not know anything about it. Oh, that's like he's trying to not be involved. I don't know nothing about it, man. Sat in the fucking council, not I? <laughs> Bloody well, better find out then. I wasn't even then. I was like, I'm having tea with my mum. Council. It's not just some bloke, it must be more than one person. Oh, fucking hell, I've got to do the bins. Oh, shit, bloody hell. <laughs> <laughs> I'm putting the sloshies on. Oh, hello, welcome to Hackney Council. I'll just go down to the cellar. <laughs> Tory councillor Maureen Middleton said, oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> She never said that. That was a cheap shot. Tory! Why did our Tory councillor in Acme actually get him? <laughs> I do care about ovens a bit. <laughs> 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 this is what she says anyway, Maureen Middleton. My understanding is that you can't use council property for political means. Well, get out of fucking town all then. Thank <laughs> <laughs> you, Lars. <laughs> well, just about to sit there going. Right, oh, do you know what? We really ought to do something because that primary school was... Is this political? <laughs> Did you see neighbours? <laughs> 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 you know, I like it if I was attractive. <laughs> it distracts me from the necessary realities. <laughs> who did not want to be named. Fucking hell! Even the people that live here in Acme are thinking, I'm not getting involved in that in case I get actually killed. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, this Hackney resident goes, I have young teenage sons and would be very concerned about that kind of influence going on. Why are they not meeting in a mosque? This is banned from the mosque. <laughs> Well, keeps going on about it, he's probably upset enough. <laughs> Mr. Ali showed kid. Oh, oh, it's got heavy. Right. We all knew we were on thin ice when this began. <laughs> the unthinkable has happened. We're doing a live DVD and we're going into the not altogether comfortable terrain of 9 11. <laughs> this before <laughs> when I sort of a little bit accidentally went dressed to work on September the 12th 2001 in a costume that can only be described as Osama Bin Laden-esque <laughs> so you know I've been distracted by that falling debris <laughs> Is that a good sign from God, do you think? <laughs> that the heavens are opened and things are now tumbling? That, for me, is God, Allah, Buddha, all of them going, God, son! You <laughs> as truth as a kind of sex sword. <laughs> okay, guys! <laughs> it's real, that is. Which I doubt. Christian God. <laughs> Why don't we go to the back of this paper where there's bits where it says it's for a massage, but we know in our heart of hearts <laughs> that it's 
the prostitutes. <laughs> Wait a second, let's see, there might not be no frosty boots. <laughs> we don't know that yet. Let's carry on. Page 36. Page 36. You sickening pervert. If it is page 36, then you, young man, are in trouble. <laughs> right, page 34. That's made to measure blinds and double glazing. 35. Plumbers, daily plumbing. Page 36, Anastasia Massage. <laughs> you sick of me. <laughs> but you are bloody reliable. <laughs> You're like a pervert Jeeves. <laughs> Jeeves, could you prepare my bath? I already have, sir. <laughs> it's full of sperm. <laughs> this is quite good, actually. Annabelle Sauna. Open 24-7. Discreet back entrance. You filthy cat. <laughs> Babes massage, stunning girls, no rush, easy parking. <laughs> Gonna leave that there a little while if you don't mind. <laughs> Look at this one, right? <laughs> a mature gentleman. Sure, gentleman offers discreet, sensuous massage. Who am a mature gentleman for? Oh, hello there, mate. Um, could I have a blowjob, please? Just grow up. <laughs> Sorry, I should have asked. <laughs> a mature gentleman coming round. Hi, yeah, I just want to do tea bagging. No, I don't do tea bagging. And you need to look at your mortgage, young man. <laughs> Borrowed at a ridiculous rate. <laughs> Invest in property. You'll never lose money. Right. You made me come. G get out. <laughs> oh, under my roof. It's my roof, nonetheless. <laughs> Oh, no, I need a weird bit. Oh, no, why has that happened? <laughs> Shit. <laughs> I can't do it, can I? I'll wait. If it keeps bothering me, I'm going to fucking well do a... What? Do it in a bottle? <laughs> yeah, it's a DVD. It's been going well so far, eh? <laughs> I've only had the Al-Qaeda eulogy. <laughs> <laughs> what I need to do now... Is create a golden arc of fury <laughs> on this famous stage. <laughs> Why did you do it? <laughs> what about when you're a child and you have to sort of this for a bit? <laughs> I'm so sorry, you pinched me, then I scratched you back. I don't have to know more, I'm grown up. I talk in a less staccato fashion. <laughs> oh, what's the point of being all little? It's annoying, isn't it, when you're little? What about when you're that old? Ah, oh, poor you, being all little like that, right? And the adult world is just this baffling cacophony of noise and confusion. I remember being that old, right? And like, my, I was wearing this body warmer and I'd gone for like, a walk with my dad and I didn't used to see my dad very much. I was a bit scared of his masculinity and presence. He was sort of there, sort of like trying to do up this body warmer and it was, the, sort of, it was cold and there was this disused pit opposite where I used to live in Grays in Essex, right? And I was sort of there and like my dad was trying to do up the zip of this body warmer. Now, you know when you're all little and that, when you wear a coat and you can't move properly in the coat? <laughs> You 
to move like that. Oh, I'm all right. All in your little coat. Right, I'm wearing like this, I think it's a body warmer, and like the zip, I couldn't do the zip up, so I got my dad to help. My dad was sort of leaning down to do the zip, sort of reaching into it, and the zip would be, it were recalcitrant, willfully disobedient. <laughs> zip. We were like that, I suppose the zip can't have wheel, but nonetheless, it weren't doing that. And it was all like, it was kind of like, oh, come on, like that, all angry, come on, just got to do that. Ah. To that zip getting all frustrated, and I could feel his breath on my face, and he was all big and unfamiliar. And a dad, oh, come on, God, test it. And then he went, I'm not gonna be beaten by a fucking zip! <laughs> Either way, you father, the zip has already won. <laughs> your temper. <laughs> and uh, I don't like, like, when your children, people want to impose this, Oi! Stop it! Grow up! Stop enjoying life and being yourself! Oh, fucking hell! And I think like, other parents try to do, like, if someone else's dad has a go at you when you're around their house, you're not my dad. What's going on? All oh, the shouting. And I don't like dads on nights. I play quietly with dads on nights. With dads. <laughs> <laughs> like the weirdness of a sort of a room, like a cave with a dad in it. <laughs> is the dad in there? Is he? Yeah, he's in there. Cave with here. Sort of rumbling noise from the dad on nights. <laughs> the dad on nights ever come out? I didn't like it. The dad on nights. <laughs> 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 All nude, like a genital, like a brown willy. Why dad's willy's much more brown? <laughs> when I was little, my willy was pink. It got a bit browner now, but it ain't dad. Brown. <laughs> Where's it going, Dad Brown? <laughs> Where would it be, Dad Brown? Willy? Well, I, my dad's willy, right? When I was a little kid, my dad's willy, it looked like it could live independently of my dad. <laughs> it like it just sort of wandered out of a thicket. <laughs> Just a little pink smurf hat. <laughs> Trying to crawl back inside itself. <laughs> what about when, like, your entire uh, self determination and esteem is defined by what time you go to bed? What time do you go to bed? Oh, me. Oh, oh you know, just about eight o'clock or something. <laughs> I go to bed when I like. <laughs> Ten o'clock, I can go to bed then. Ten thirty, I just tend to choose. Sometimes I just watch news night. <laughs> then go to bed. What about you? Eight thirty, is it? You're a mug. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, and then, right, well, I had once had to, but my mum was away, so I had to stay with my dad, right? And my mum was parenting me from a predetermined idea of what parenthood is, like the innate idea of the family. All oh, right, I'm a mum, I'll be a mum in the way that my mum was a mum. My dad approached parenting as if that dynamic had never happened before. <laughs> all right, what do you want then? <laughs> you all right, oh, yeah, mate. <laughs> so then when I was staying with him, he went, uh, all right, OK, uh, so uh, what time do you go to bed then? I thought, Fucking hell! <laughs> he doesn't know what he's doing! <laughs> Shit! <laughs> I mean, about ten o'clock. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> oh, yes! Uh, the same feeling that as an adult I would get walking through customs with heroin in my bottom. <laughs> Tip for you. OK, 
Okay, this is a very useful tip. It's actually only any real use if you are a drug addict. Um, <laughs> if you're not a drug addict, don't think, ooh, that's a good tip. I'll become a drug addict in order to employ the tip. That is false economy. <laughs> but if you are a drug addict, here is your tip. Say, right, if you're a drug addict and you've got to go on holiday, right, you go have some drugs with you, and you? Otherwise the holiday will be spoiled, right? <laughs> but because of them squares in customs, <laughs> it's very difficult to get the drugs to be on the holiday with you. And you must have the drugs, but you must have a safe way of transporting them. That is why I suggest that you use uh, your special back pocket, <laughs> Jesus's internal wallet, <laughs> the corridor to Narnia. <laughs> your bottom. Because I think this, right, say you're in an airport and you're walking about, right, and a customs official approaches you and says, oh, come this way, please, sir, and takes you into that room, one bit mirrored, one bit glass, one bit mirrored, one bit glass, one bit mirrored, one bit glass window. Why have that one bit mirror, one bit glass, one bit mirror, one bit glass? Like, say if you walk past it, it's like a flick book for perverts. <laughs> official takes you into that little room, puts on the unforgiving cold rubber glove like an evil sooty show, <laughs> pass your buttocks, inserts two digits, uses the scissor and twist technique. <laughs> hey, this is just an anecdote to you, I live this shit. <laughs> Right, and carries out a thorough cavity search inside your bottom, and you haven't got any drugs up there, that's still gonna ruin your holiday. <laughs> By the time it gets to that stage, you might as well have drugs up your ass. <laughs> puncture a bag and take the edge off an otherwise difficult experience. <laughs> Plus, in an airport situation, it's difficult because of sniffer dogs, right? Sniffer dogs present us with a curious dichotomy. I t this is a split idea. I don't mean to be patronising, but I do like to cater to the thick. <laughs> <laughs> Is. And if you're offended by that, then you have to go, I'm offended by that. And then, then the caveat must be, because I'm thick. <laughs> <laughs> so I'd be offended if sort of acknowledged that you are thick. And none of us are, so we're all back on speaking terms. <laughs> you see a sniffer dog, right, it's a difficult situation, especially if you've got some heroin in your bottom, because you sort of think, right, on one hand you think, oh no, there's a sniffer dog and I've got all that heroin in my bottom, but on the other hand you think, oh, <laughs> that dog's got a job. Five. You work a nine to five. What I want to make a living. What a nine to five. What I want to make a living. <laughs> Would you mind coming this way, please? <laughs> <laughs> oh, Sniffer dogs. Dogs don't should have job. That's as bad as your grammar cat. <laughs> dogs don't need a job. A dog is just a dog, isn't it? Plus, even amateur dogs will do some sniffing <laughs> in their leisure time. <laughs> like, I don't like that because they put the guilt on you. 
But if a dog start probing you here with its snout, like, why have I got to bear the burden of the guilt? <laughs> he's doing it. I ain't sniffing his nuts. <laughs> oh, 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 must be smelling my dog. He's smelling your cock. <laughs> He's living in your scrotal sack. <laughs> I don't think a, you should have a sniffer dog, because a dog shouldn't have a job, right? And why? Why in our lifetimes, our human lifetimes, that we're all enduring and enjoying together, was there a programme? Why did this happen? There was a programme on our TV sets called Dogs with Jobs, right? <laughs> Jobs, and they used to put it on at 11:30 in the morning. Right now, I was unemployed at that time, <laughs> and I resented a program called Dogs with Jobs being put on telly when they knew unemployed people would be watching, <laughs> like eating Weetabix for the 40th consecutive day. <laughs> oh, just keep putting the wee a big scene so don't die. <laughs> like a baby bird. There's <laughs> <laughs> a programme called Dogs With Jobs. Oh, fucking hell. Even the dogs have got jobs. <laughs> Sadly, is seven years old, and she's a vital member of the paramedics team. Without her, the ambulance simply won't leave the hospital. <laughs> Fuck off, Sandy, you scab! <laughs> Dog don't need a job. It's the stupidest thing I've ever heard of. Uh, oh, God. Oh, yeah. Right. Because you'd think, if you was me... You would think this, and I am me, so I'm in a perfect position. So <laughs> far, conclusive evidence on that. Isn't it like when you go away on holiday, you think, oh, I better go away from holiday, cheer myself up, get away from it all. But when you go on holiday, you're there. So it's shit. <laughs> Can't get away from you. Oh, it's me somewhere a bit different. <laughs> I've just got to have this, have I, until eventually death. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty much the deal. Thanks. Thanks for that. I'm glad I signed. Oh, it's too late now. Um, <laughs> yeah, I'd done this film. I thought, oh, that'd be good to do an Hollywood film, right? To go away, do a Hollywood film. It ain't, right? Because you're, I'm still me doing an Hollywood film. I ain't someone else. I don't become someone else who likes being in an Hollywood film, I'm me. So it's embarrassing. Plus, look at the odd things I have to do in this film. One, horse riding. That's odd, horse riding. The horse don't want you on it. I'm telling you that now. He ain't happy about that arrangement. Everyone's saying, oh, it's really simple. The horse riding, it's just like driving a car. I can't drive a fucking car. <laughs> Just pull it that way. If you want the horse to go that way, pull it that way. If you want the horse to stop, just go like that. Just like driving a car. A car, right, won't just suddenly, of its own accord, go into a garage because it wants like, an air freshener tree. <laughs> or sometimes just wants dinner. And, like, go, goes to get dinner. And the only way you stop it is by being horrible to the horse. Like, ugh. And the horse is already unhappy about being a horse, you can see that. So, like, it looks embarrassed. Oh, hello. <laughs> Sorry about that. I appear to be trapped in a ridiculous body. <laughs> I'm a spindly, muscular coward. <laughs> They're ashamed of themselves because they go down at the too thin a point. <laughs> You can see they're awkward about it, right? I'll <laughs> oh, just, just kick it, sh kick it, and make it do what you say. Be horrible to it. That's how I've watched. Show it your boss. 
showing you all the boss. I'm I the boss? He goes horse riding every single day. I've only been once. <laughs> The film I had to do the horse riding in was made in Hawaii. Hawaii is all right, but it's a little bit like a sort of tropical prison because uh, if you ain't famous somewhere, it's much more hard to have sex with people. It takes longer. <laughs> it's time consuming. Right, because like, yeah, and that's difficult because like, there was an actress on the film I was sort of fancied a little bit. Mila Kunis, she was. And I went to sort of, like, chat her up. Like, oh, all right, hello, yeah, you're nice. And I can't remember all the proper chat-up techniques anymore. Hello, yeah, oh, did you, all right? Just whittling, really. Right? And I chatted to her, and then she goes, oh, yeah, I've got a boyfriend. And I sort of thought, well, how long is it polite to continue pretending to be interested <laughs> in what someone says after they reveal they've got a boyfriend. Oh, I, th I think it's 11 seconds. <laughs> yeah, all right, okay. What, well, yeah, no, I am just going. Yeah, yeah, well, I was just talking to you because, yeah, for sex, yeah. So I've got, <laughs> right? Look, I can pretend to be nice for a little bit of time, you know, at the beginning of a relationship, pretending to be nice. I'm quite nice. I nod a lot. I'm quite nice. Yeah, come around my house. Yeah, we'll just watch a video. No, it's all right. I'll sleep on the sofa. Right, pretending to be nice. Yeah, no, it's all right. We'll just cuddle. No, we'll just kiss a bit. That's all right. No, I'm not even that interested in sex. Where's it come? I'll just kiss. Yeah, just watch Wonderful Life on the video. The Nobstacle Course, I call that. <laughs> Yeah, because that in Hawaii, it was a bit hard because, like, I had to, like, even when you're doing a film, they say, oh, you'll be living in this trailer or using a trailer as a dressing room. They had trailers, right, silver bullet trailer things from the future. I had a fucking caravan. That's what I had, right? You know when you're little and you go on holiday and that holiday is too near your house? Right? It's really near. House, the holiday, but I used to go, where is it? Around here, you probably go same place as me because it's Hackney, right? Clacton is where I'd go. I live near Clacton. Don't get excited. The fact that you're excited about Clacton is evidence to me that you shouldn't have been allowed to leave there. <laughs> yeah! <laughs> them holidays, what's really neat. A holiday, like caravan holiday in Clacton, right? We could have just gone to Clacton in the day and then gone home and had my own telly. <laughs> no point. And then being really amazed, going on holiday somewhere and being amazed that my nan and granddad would visit me on the holiday. Oh, nan and granddad! Here yeah, on the holiday! Thou must have crossed the <laughs> dragons that are slain. Rest thy weary bones and tell me the tales of how you came to be here. I just went on the A5, really. <laughs> yeah. So I was talking to her, pretending to listen. Yeah, I've got a boyfriend, my boyfriend Mac. Oh, your boyfriend Mac, yeah, he's gonna come and visit. Oh, is he? Oh, that's nice. All right, okay. All right, bye then. Right, and sort of like, yeah, and I was sort of had to go and sort of wait in my sort of caravan, which is just a sort of a slum on sticks, really. <laughs> and I was sort of in there. And like on the first day of principal filming, a boyfriend came, right, and he's sort of like, it was mad, because I was trying to just keep my head together and think like, I was trying to think like, don't get attached to the idea of the caravan, all right? Don't be all beat up about it, that they're in their trailers, you're in the caravan. Don't, because like, I sort of think you are a spiritual being, detach yourself, it doesn't matter, it's immaterial. Your soul is eternal, the material world is transient. Do not become attached to your caravan and worrying about the caravan. It is ultimately irrelevant. You are a good man. But then I'd see one of them going into their lovely trailer and think, you fucking cunts! <laughs> right. 
And on like the first day of filming, right, I see her come out of a glorious trailer. She's sort of like that, right? That's her boyfriend is in there. She didn't do an interpretive dance. That's him in there. Right, and I was coming out of my slum, right, and just walking along trying to keep me a day old eye. And as she walked past, she goes, Oh, Russell, this is my boyfriend, Mac. And I'd sort of go, Oh, all right there, Mac, and walk past what is quite clearly Macaulay Culkin. <laughs> Mac! Mac, that is not Mac. That is Macaulay Culkin. You've got a longer and got to be a wave faced and pinched like a ghost, man. That was Macaulay Culkin. That is Macaulay fucking Culkin. You are fucking Macaulay Culkin. Mac, I'm rebranding as Mac. Oh, it's Mac. Oh, it's Mac, is he? Right, Ma Macaulay Culkin. Right, go like it. Do the face. Do it. Do it. Do it. Do it. Macaulay Culkin, you get in this trailer, get in there, shut yourself in, I'm going to go and get Joe Pesci and try and break in, you're going to defend yourself with pots and pans. <laughs> I had to sort of go, oh, all right, Mac. Macaulay Culkin, Macaulay Culkin, Macaulay Culkin. <laughs> Plus, I couldn't ask him stuff. Like, I wanted to go, come on, mate, be honest. What happened? <laughs> Michael Jackson, hmm? <laughs> Neverland. Sometimes land. <laughs> and Woody Olsen turned up. Right, Woody Olsen, out of cheers, just turned up. Right, and I liked him. He was pretty amazing and intense, sort of intense eyes. I think he might like a puff or something. Right? <laughs> he was dead nice. And like he was sort of there, I think he knew one of the producers, and I was living sort of on this kind of in this chalet, looking out across the ocean, a beautiful lawn, these gorgeous trees, and it was a sort of spectacular and beautiful way to be imprisoned every day, awoken at 5am by a cockerel, as if it was its fucking job to do it, as if it was in a regimented way. Why do they do that? Well, I'll tell you why, it is territorial, I learned, they've been territorial, in fact, all birdsong is just territorial, aggressive shouting. Right, so when you read in Wordsworth, oh, fucking hell, a nightingale, oh, how beautiful the mellifluous song of a lark, that is just birds going, fuck off! <laughs> this is my tree! <laughs> fuck you! <laughs> and when, if, right, I'm left on my own too much, I recede to the mentality of a child very quickly and very easily. Like, what, what about in a child? New, like, um, new coins come out. It's no 20 p's! Oh, no 5 p's! Oh, bloody hell! Look at this new 20 p! This is worth more than 20 p! <laughs> mistake at the factory. I'm keeping that in the jar. <laughs> Not worth more. It is. Them five peas, they're so little. That's worth more. <laughs> Keep that forever. It's a doubloon. It's the currency of the pirate. It's not worth nothing. But it is five p. it's clear. <laughs> yeah, so if I'm left alone, I regress to a childlike state, right? And on that bloody film, because I thought, don't hang out with the actors and everything all the time, or they'll find out what you're like, and it'll be a problem, right? So I just <laughs> spent a lot of time on my own, right? And to fill the time, I sort of invented this, right, 
I had a hula hoop hung with a bit of string or sort of cloth more, a bit of cloth hung from an air vent, right? And I had like a sort of quite late, lightweight football and I just sort of played football on my own, right? Ah, oh, yeah, and I'm not very good at football and just sort of kick it and sort of through the hoop and miss most of the time. But because I was on my own, I started to take it a bit too seriously and think, oh, I'll just keep track of how I'm doing, right? <laughs> play against other teams in my imagination. You got me out of I bought a dice and did other team scores, then did a league of jotting down what I was doing. It's like, oh God, oh no, we've got to play Wigan. Oh God, they're really on four. What are we gonna do? <laughs> and I was doing that one day in these green pants, just taking the league quite seriously. I think we had a difficult game coming up against Everton. They really hit their stride. It was tricky, right? And out the window, I'm just wearing them green pants and see fucking Woody Olsen, right? All big little, although retrospectively, that may have been he was far away at his perspective, <laughs> right? I see him, yeah, well, then he was, because he was getting bigger as he came closer, right? And he's I'm thinking, oh, look, there's Woody Olsen, just standing in my green pants, thinking... Oh, here he comes, old Woody Olsen, that's all right, that's just part of life. Right, and he got nearer and nearer until he was actually at the patio door things of my chalet, right? And like, because he's Hollywood movie star, he don't obey proper protocols, I don't think. Right, me, if I go walk through someone's patio door, this is what I'm going to do, right? I ain't just going to breeze in like that. Uh, this is me, right? This is me going through someone's patio doors. <laughs> oh! <laughs> That's how I start. Like, can I come in? In fact, I wouldn't even say it out loud. I'd mouth it. Can I come in? <laughs> can I come in now? With you? Can we be in there together? What? I'd mouth it so they didn't feel threatened. Woody Olsen, he just bowled in like that. Hey man, what's going on? He was just in there and I was in my pants and I had these Brazil nuts, right? And he just sort of like took one, started <laughs> like crunching it up and that, and I was a little bit scared, right? And, was, and he sort of seemed like a big, and all like lumbering, like a sort of a dinosaur. He didn't seem to have a natural stature. <laughs> Touching stuff and that. And I sort of realised that I was just in my pants. <laughs> that, that hoop thing was there. I thought, oh no. <laughs> right? Because he'd like see it. He goes, hey, what's that, man? I thought, fuck. <laughs> you have to tell him. Right? Because when I set up that game, I didn't think at some point I'd have to justify it to the cast of Cheers. <laughs> I thought, I'm gonna have to tell him the truth, otherwise, because I'm in my pants and I'm a bit weird, he's gonna think I'm doing some odd autoerotic asphyxiation <laughs> wank game thing. <laughs> Here's another tip, right? <laughs> if during a wank you start to die, <laughs> stop wanking! <laughs> this wank now. I'm committed to it. <laughs> if during a wank a tunnel of light appears with Christ at the end of it, <laughs> stop wanking. Don't think, oh, don't let that spur the wank on. <laughs> oh, fucking hell, this Jesus, I'll fuck him in the stigma. <laughs> stop wanking. It's what's that, man? Uh, oh, that. <laughs> and I just said, like, look, that was part of my life. Like, this is part of my life now, being in here with you. Oh, hello, all right, all right. Person, right? There was a moment in my life when Woody Arsenal was there, right? It, what's that, man? Then there's an uncomfortable silence while he tried to work out how mentally ill I was. <laughs> and I had to go, that. Oh, 
That's where I play this football game in, me, in here, on my own, Woody Olsen, out of cheers. <laughs> and it's awkward, so I just couldn't think of nothing to say. So I just went, do you want to go? <laughs> he went, yeah. I thought, right, this is happening now, brilliant. Well, <laughs> and Woody Olsen just started walking over to the penalty spot. Being that. <laughs> Put the ball down on it, looked up at the hoop, took a single breath like that, like you're a noble Roman emperor, looked through the hoop and went, first time every time, kicked it and scored the cunt. Then right? <laughs> walked over here, like picked up another Brazil nut, and they were right by the fucking league tables, and I had to go, oh, Pull a newspaper for you see the league. He just bowled out the door, walked across that green lawn thing, and started climbing a tree. <laughs> I was just watch it happen. <laughs> and plus, right, it totally destroyed the league because he had one shot scored, one goal. It was an away goal. Just devastated the whole system. <laughs> And I couldn't relax, I didn't do the league no more, because I thought, oh, fucking hell, Ted Danson might just bowl in <laughs> and start querying my choice of kit. <laughs> then I had to do a sex scene in this film. Hey, Russell, do you mind showing your ass in that sex scene? Mm, yeah, I do. <laughs> That's okay. I don't, I don't want to show it. No, that's cool, man. You can just wear these, and, like, flesh-coloured briefs. <laughs> flesh-coloured briefs. Is there a less erotic conglomeration of language than flesh-coloured briefs? <laughs> right? You don't feel very sad. It's the colour of a prosthetic limb, right? It's about to wear these flesh-coloured briefs. And underneath it, they give you, like, to sort of keep your genitals all safe, they give you, like, a little, well, not that little, an average size sack thing <laughs> to put your genitals in. But it's max, it's like a drawstring on the top of it, and that's under there. You've got to put your cock and balls in this sort of sack. I tell you what it's like. Remember when we killed Saddam Hussein? <laughs> we put that bag on his head. It's like one of them for your cock and balls. And I thought that was out of order, as I was saying, as well. So I've, I've sort of gone round to the opinion of, oh, should we let him off? Because I'll tell you why. Because you know when we dug him up out of that hole in the ground, when he got found in that hole, when he came out, and he was all a bit dirty and he had a long beard, he looked a bit like Father Christmas, I thought. <laughs> oh, I thought he looked like a Father Christmas who'd been sacked from Debenhams for being drunk at work. <laughs> He's just, he's all right. And he, should we let him off? No, we can't. He's proper out of order. Oh, no. So, he, let, uh, give him a cuddle, yeah? No. He's out of order, proper out of order. I just felt sorry for him, because when they got him down that hole, they provided an inventory of what he had down there with him, and one of the items was a fun-sized Mars bar. It sort of made me want to cry that he was down there with that. Because I thought, oh, not even a normal size Mars bar. <laughs> it made me think that there'd have to be some flunky for Saddam Hussein going, well, Saddam, he really like chocolate, but it is a very little hole. <laughs> Fun size Mars bar. <laughs> think about what you have done. I mean. <laughs> Yes, I had a sedan sack on my cock and balls, even though they dictate to no one but me. In there, sort of all trussed up. And that's, like, that's unerotic. What's also unerotic is the piercing sort of glare of the bright lighting and men, burly men, sort of trucker-type men stood around with tall belts. And the actress I was working with, she had to be wearing her own version of nude clothes. Right, and she had both. I felt sorry for her, because I know you lot all think that I'm a pervert. And, in a way, 
I am. But also, I'm quite humane, and she seems sort of vulnerable, right? And she's just wearing like these sort of pink plastic knickers to look sort of flesh coloured, and they sort of look like, so you know when licorice is flattened out and sort of coloured, sort of like red licorice, but it's like pink flat licorice knickers to cover her genitals there and like her boobs are covered with that. You know like those uh, silicone jelly things that women put down their bras to trick us? <laughs> she had those over her boobs. So she had like this sort of jelly bra and like licorice knickers. She looked like a Bertie Bassett prostitute. <laughs> I feel sorry for her, you know? And, like, it's difficult because it, it, doing a sex scene is hard because you have uh, unearned proximity, unearned intimacy. You're that close to someone, but you've not been through the typical rituals that one would go through to get that kind of, you know, before you normally kiss someone or have it off, you've gone through... Well, admittedly, in my case now, rather stunted rituals. <laughs> oh, are you Russell Brand? Yes, I am. Can I have my photo done with you? Yes, you can. Are you 18? Yes, I am. Let's go to this toilet. <laughs> but it is a ritual nonetheless. And if you think we don't need rituals in our culture, you bastards, <laughs> we do. Right? Because look what happens, right? Say, so when, when a new cultural event occurs, a protocol will emerge to augment and protect that. E.G. Chip and Pin, right? Oh, Chip and Pin! We'll use Chip and Pin! Right? But now that Chip and Pin machines are there, there's a new protocol emerged around that, because say you're in a shop, right? You have to put your card in, there's a moment Right, when you're doing your pin number, when the shopkeeper thinks, oh God, they're doing their pin number, and you think, oh God, the shopkeeper might look at my pin number. <laughs> oh crikey. So he'll sort of maybe like just do a little look away like that to sort of make you feel more comfortable, but sometimes it's too dramatic, like a Duran Duran video. So, wild boys, wild boys! <laughs> little machine anyway. I don't like it. It tells you what to do. Hand me back to the merchant! Like a little bossy toddler. <laughs> you touch my buttons! <laughs> Jack, who's the fucking merchant? <laughs> Shopkeeper, that is. Who says merchant? Mm. Are you the merchant? Yes, I am. <laughs> Would you like some silks and spices from around the globe? <laughs> word to call something. It's anachronistic. That means from another time, an old time, what we've already done once. <laughs> yeah, don't worry so much about pin numbers. Oh, fuck. Pin number. My pin number. I have my pin number. I'll tell you it. 7263. That's my pin number. 7263. <laughs> Alright? It's no fucking good on its own. You can't just wander into Argos and go, yeah, can I have that barbecue, please, and that sofa, 7263. Right. <laughs> it's useless. You need the card. <laughs> oh, right, so I suppose what you could do is mug me after. <laughs> Get that fucking card. 7263, you fucking prick. <laughs> Get your hair cut. I can't afford to now. <laughs> you won't remember that anyway. <laughs> you smug bastard. <laughs> mm. Oh, yeah. So, the, yeah, the intimacy of the sex scene is difficult, it's embarrassing, it's awkward to be that sort of close to someone like that that you've not earned proximity to. It just seems odd and unusual and a little difficult. And plus, what's really difficult is, like, when you have to do some acting, the director goes, ACTION! Right, and that's all right if you're doing normal acting. 
action. No, don't leave me, Debbie. I'll kill ya. <laughs> Brilliant acting by me then. But if it's a sex scene, right, they go, action! Oh, right, you this, do this, okay, well, I'm ready for the, oh, <laughs> sex it is then, okay, and like, I thought, like, they're all American and think they're all cool, I'm English, I don't want them thinking English people aren't good at sex, right, so I really fucking went for it, <laughs> took it on the first take, action, oh, 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 fucking oh, yeah, The anaconda. <laughs> the light storm. <laughs> uh, the matrix. like you've trapped it. <laughs> Feels like it's in there. Could I come out, please? <laughs> why do people do this? Say you're in a pub, why does this happen? People do this, watch this, this happen. <sighs> <laughs> what are they shaking their head for? And then someone sees it and goes, Right? And I got in a lot of trouble doing those Brit Awards, right? For these a couple of here's one reason, right? I did a joke, it was a good joke, there was nothing wrong with it, right? I said this, um, right, and this went to a tribunal and there was all sorts of ramifications and trouble as a result of this. Grown ups had to sit around and discuss it, right? I said it was time for the best male category in the Brit Awards, and what I said was uh Time now for the best male category. If we were ants, the best male would have to have sex with the queen. We are not ants. But is that any reason to ignore their time-honoured traditions? <laughs> and before you turn away and are sick into your own handbag, can any of you here honestly say that if I gave you an envelope and told you that inside was a photograph of the queen's vagina, that you wouldn't have a look. <laughs> and then I went, here with that envelope is Joss Stone. Right? And Joss Stone came out and she had an envelope because she had the nominees in that envelope. Joss Stone came out talking in a thousand accents, none of them hers. <laughs> needed a wee dead bad in that situation. It was awkward and terrible, right? And I've been like, the men's toilets were fucking, and I was doing the Brits, so it's difficult to go for a wee. The men's toilets were sort of like miles and miles away. And the women's toilets, 
had just stone in them, acting unusual. So it's like a friendly environment to be in. And I thought, I'll just wee in a bottle, right? And I thought, like, but the, the thing is, right, with weeing in the bottle, particularly if there's liquid in that bottle, it's like you have to drink the liquid to empty the vessel so you feel like you're kind of at war with your own bladder. <laughs> doesn't feel like a natural thing to do. And secondly, the problem is, right, it's difficult because it's, if you need to wee in a bottle and you're a man, right, I'm going to have to use some childish language here, your helmet <laughs> seals the top of the bottle shut, <laughs> creating a vacuum into which liquid must pass, <laughs> creating what I call urinary vapour displacement syndrome. <laughs> In this case, the escaping gas coming out of the bottle caused my foreskin to inflate, <laughs> sort of like a bullfrog's neck. <laughs> sort of looked like my willy had mumps. <laughs> I sort of stood on stage with this bottle filling up with urine with my, sort of with my foreskin inflating and on stage I could hear take that going time! I thought life's not supposed to be like this. <laughs> mental because, right, Liam Gallagher, this is what happened, right, I was about to walk, I was seeing over it, all right, right, and I was about to walk over to him, and he was with his wife out of the Appletons, and I can never remember which one that he's married to, so I was sort of walking towards him, I'm driving, oh no, which one is it? Fuck, I've got to say the name. I've got to have to say the name in a minute. It's going to be the moment where I say the name. Just do an amalgamation. I went, all right, Nagalai, Nikolai, Natalai, did you like Shai, Nagalai, Nikli? I really like your band. All Spice. <laughs> right? And I had to sort of do a bit of a stunted conversation with her. Nagalai's there, Liam's here, I'm here. I go, oh yeah, all right, uh, yeah, yeah, so I'm just going, oh yeah, oh, Russell, it's lovely to meet you, oh yeah, oh, yeah it's nice to meet you. I used to be friendly with my mate Mel. Oh yeah, your mate Mel, yeah, Mel, how is Mel, is she all right, right, yeah, and that guy's there, Liam, there. is Mel okay, Mel okay, is she, and Liam goes, she's got an airy arsehole. <laughs> something like that. <laughs> As she made it. <laughs> what could that be the correct response to? <laughs> what question or elicit that? As the response only if a customs official was asking for distinguishing marks. <laughs> would that be considered an appropriate answer to a question? <laughs> and I don't know to say, because uh, the Brett's Guide to Etiquette does not say if someone points out the hairy arsehole of a third party, one ought to take a gentle sip of one's tea <laughs> and salute. There's no here. Yeah. <laughs> no, that, that's something that always happens to me. I used to have this drug dealer, Lucky <laughs> he was called, he weren't even lucky, right? <laughs> lucky <laughs> was around his house, just sat on the sofa. And he came up to me with a photograph, right, of what was quite clearly his wife's vagina. <laughs> and went, all right, Russell, what do you think of that? Show me. I thought, well, what do you say to that? What's the polite response? <laughs> In the end, I just went, mmm. <laughs> so I gave it back, mmm. Because that's non-committal, mmm. 
<laughs> like make the sound and give the photo back on the sound. Mm. <laughs> like you're supposed to, if a mugger mugs you, you're meant to go, no! Right? So the mugger, it surprises the mugger that you know what you're doing. No! Because he's asserting, don't mug me! <laughs> I don't mug you, don't mug me! <laughs> the mugger will be disoriented. No! <laughs> you mug me then! Stop mugging! <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah. Right, so yeah. Uh, Liam Gallagher, Li uh, Liam's here, Nagalai's there, I'm here. Then Liam put me in a psychological vortex of language. I fucking hate people doing that. <laughs> right? What he done was he told me that uh, his mum really liked me, but then he kept telling me that, even though I'd responded already. <laughs> Hey, what's up? Our man fucking loves you, mate. <laughs> oh, does she? Oh, that's lovely. Oh, thank you, Liam. Thank you. Thanks for telling us that, mate. She fucking loves you. <laughs> she fucking loves you. Oh, does she? Oh, that's lovely. Do pass on my regards. That's very <laughs> good. She fucking loves you. <laughs> <laughs> Afterwards, I will come and talk to some people, like all of you, anyone who wants. We're going to do, like, I'll come over there and sign things and meet you in that and, frankly, run an unofficial kind of, sort of a talent show. Uh, <laughs> sort of imagine pop idol but with the ultimate goal of providing me with casual sex. Cock idol, I suppose. <laughs> I suppose is what it would be. Yeah, I'll do that afterwards. But before I go, does anyone have any inquiries or questions they want to ask of me? <laughs> you can have my autograph, yes. If that's some kind of glorious euphemism. <laughs> To write is in a silvery snail trail across your room. <laughs> I like threesomes, you should probably know. I do enjoy threesome, but in threesomes, much better, I think. If you're gonna have a threesome, right, and you're a heterosexual man, have it with two women. Don't have it with one of your mates and a woman, right? Because all you've done then is just doubled the chance of someone farting during sex. <laughs> also, you run the constant risk of what I know as nut brush. <laughs> I've once done a threesome, right? I've done a threesome with my mate Matt, right? I accidentally, key word, got a little bit, key phrase, I accidentally got a little bit of spunk on his leg. <laughs> and Matt, in the most childish act of tit for tat retaliation, <laughs> Sort of spunky water pistol. <laughs> There's a girl in the background just sort of going, uh, guys. <laughs> Ridiculous ticker tape parade for idiots. <laughs> right. 
I will come and see you in a little bit. We'll meet each other out there, carry out some sort of process. I really appreciate you coming tonight. Thank you very much. I've enjoyed performing for you because I love you. Hare Krishna. Good night.